All right, so I need to finish passing these out, but we need to have the five one five two notes out, and we then are going to be going into five three five four. So if my smart work ever loads the five three five four assignment, um, I forget if I've made it live yet in school. Has anyone checked if the five three five four is see. a live fella? Right? I didn't see it. Yeah. Okay. It's starting to get better. I also know your name because you do magic, so you were easy to remember. Oh. So, keep those out. We don't need to worry about them right now. We'll talk about those in a minute. Do we have questions from the... Ah, fine. Because you have them out now, I can see that look on your face like, what? Why? So, I said this yesterday, but in true middle school fashion, a lot of you don't hear the things we said. You did not fix this test. I fixed it for you, right? We went over every question today, or yesterday in class. Pass those back, please. So, as I had said yesterday, when we go over the test in class and do those corrections in class, the way that you go from a progressing to a mastery is then turning in the original test with corrections. So if you didn't write down corrections as we went through class, that's tough on you because you have to have those corrections completed. The file is uploaded, the video is uploaded, you can still access all of those correction works. But, how you go from progression to mastery, read this sentence, and if you have a highlighter, I would highlight it right beside the hole punch. Who wants to read out loud this morning? Ooh, got a good Alright, Abby, make sure you emphasize it right, this sentence. Okay. Right here. Make sure that you turn in the original mastery with your corrections stapled to the back of this paper. So if you turn in just this paper, I will just hand it back was to it you. Good? Yes, it was very good. Thank you. I will not even look at this if you only turn in this paper. I have to see your original test and the corrections as well as this. My advice, and I'm gonna send a stapler around the room, my advice is staple this on top of your original test right now so they can't separate and you know that they will be together. The other benefit is if I'm working on this, these questions look very, very, very similar to the original test. A couple of them might actually be the same. One is, no, no, they're similar. They're very, very close. Um, but because they're so similar, if you get stuck on one of these on the progression to mastery, then just go look at the original test and look at your corrections and how you solve it accurately. Then solve it accurately on here. You may also work with your peers you do not have to complete this independently. You may use Schoology and all of our resources that we have, yes. and you can come talk to me and ask me questions, and I'll work with you to work, to work through problems. So this, with your original test, with your corrections, needs turned in to take that grade from a progressing to a mastery. Now, I gave those sheets to everybody in here, but if you are already mastered, if you gave yourself a mastery and I agreed with it, then you can just turn that blank, the thing I just gave you, you can just turn that back into me. You don't need to do it. So if you are already mastered, you do not need to do that assignment. Any questions about how, yeah. Well, we didn't go over 17. So, 
17 my dogs go up down up and then down again or something like that they end up at 18 feet so if your math was not correct on that just check how you did the math they should end up at 18 feet nice on 5152 from the chalk talk are there any questions that you still have? And by the way, did you like that little point where I told you to pause the video and yeah. do your yeah. work? Because I know you, you're in middle school. So when we do chalk talks and as we get further into the year, when I ask you to pause the video and try a problem on your own, the only person you're going to hurt if you don't do that is you. Because doing the practice and practicing the skills independently is how you learn and how you grow. So if you don't practice it independently and you just sit there like a sponge soaking things up and not actually doing anything, you won't learn it as well as if you pause it and try it on your own. So as we get into doing more of those chalk talk type things, if I ask you to pause it and try it on your own, at least give it a shot on your own. Hayden? So I paused the video, then I did it, and then I unpaused it, and then you're like, I knew that a couple people would do that. Like if you actually paused it and then came back and I was like, you didn't pause that video. Yeah, so that happens too. What questions though? Anything that you didn't understand from the notes? Ab? I never really understand, understand it, like the models of like the sum of the negative five and stuff. Like that. Where? Front, back, what? Uh, chapter four. Yeah. I'm talking about the five, one, five, two. Uh, we already went over the whole chapter four test. We're not spending more class time on that. If you want to work with me, come work with me. But I'm talking about these that you filled out through the chalk talk. Xavier? I mean, just kind of like the bottom example of got it with like the these? decimals. The decimals. These? Yeah. So um, these go back to stock market, which stock market is a really weird thing to understand when you're young. Um, so every company that is a public uh, actually, I don't even think it's only public. Every company that uh, essentially exists, that is a big company, has stock. And stock is owned by people that invest in the company. So if myself and my wife start a company, it's just us. We are the only stockholders. But if we want to grow the company, and I come and I ask you guys, hey guys, if you invest $5 in my company, I'll give you a stock share. And if we make money, you make money. Well, that's a great deal. But the flip side of that is if I lose money, you lose money. So stock is your investment in that company. So if you have stock in a company, as each stock changes, you either gain money or lose money. So this person owns 203.72 stocks in a company. You do not have to buy whole values of stocks because I could buy a hundred dollars worth of stock and that'll just give me however many shares I get. Like there will be no, um, or some people buy 50 shares and pay whatever that costs based on the shares. So if we're looking at stock, and I'm only going to do one of these, so would you prefer the example or the got it? Do you have a preference? Um, just like the got it. Yeah. So how this really works is you take the number of shares that they have. Yeah. So if more people own stocks, then will you get less money? Uh, so the more people that buy stocks, either the cheaper the stocks are or the bigger the company gets. So like if you went and looked at Apple stock right now, it probably doesn't cost that much because there's a ton of it. Like there's a lot of stock available. But if you look at a small company where there's not much stock available, it still might not be that expensive because it's a smaller company. But if it was a really lucrative, like worth a lot of money and they only had a thousand stocks, then their stock would cost a lot. But if they had 10,000 stocks, then it would be a lot cheaper. Does that make sense? No. Yeah, it, it doesn't need to make sense. It's just understanding how the math works. You don't need to understand the stock market right now. All you need to understand is change in value. So what we're really talking about is change in value. Every stock is changing by 20 cents. It's fake. There's a fake app you can download that lets you fake trade stocks. Okay. So if you're interested in the stock market, there is a, and actually one of my friends who's looking at investing money into stocks has that app to see, because it, it works with the actual stock market. You just don't actually invest money. So yeah, but that you can do that if you're curious about it. So what we're saying here is each stock drops 20 cents. So a drop 
of 20 cents, right? That doesn't look very good. So if I drop 20 cents, it's negative. And I'm doing this problem, but I have no more paper to slide up. But then you have to say, how many stocks do I have to drop? Well, it's 57.08. So I have to multiply that by the amount that it's dropping. So in total, if this is what happened today, if my stock dropped 20 cents, and that was the only thing that happened, then today I lost, with decimals, they get a little funky. You, you could do it without a calculator, but you're allowed with decimals to use a calculator. If I round it, that tells me that today I lost about $11. Now, tomorrow, if the stock goes up by more than 20 cents, I'll end up gaining money. But if it keeps going down, I'm just going to keep losing money until I've lost everything. Um, and there, there's a couple movies that kind of spoof on the stock market um, where they talk about, like, oh, if, if you go on the news and make some announcement about your company, it can vastly change the stock of your company. When Apple announces they're coming out with a new phone, that's good for their stock. People get excited. They know they're going to spend money. But if a company announced, like, um, who was it? Samsung. I was just having a discussion with a gentleman over at the WEC. Samsung Galaxy Note 7 or one, some of their 7s. They have a battery that is, like, wireless charging and all that stuff. And it's, you can take it out. That's one thing Samsung has against Apple. Has anyone heard any of the issues Samsung's having? About a week ago, came out publicly. Samsung's phones... They've had 35 of them. Now, no, there's like thousands probably in existence. There's been 35 of them that their batteries have exploded. So imagine your phone in your pocket and your battery explodes. So they took a big hit because people were like, oh, crap, Samsung, that's not good. Get my money out of Samsung. And when people sell their stock to get their money back, that's not good. That's like that's bad for the company because that's essentially people taking money out of the company. Because if you think that company is gonna start to go down, get your money before it goes down. Now Apple, on the tail coat, or on the coattails, sorry, of that, announced the brand new iPhone. So Samsung's hurting, Apple's like, hey, look at our new phone. So it's, it, you can check out stocks and it's interesting. Yeah, Anthony? The iPhone 7 I think is coming out today. It, yeah, I think it came out yesterday actually. But I don't care about iPhone. So anything, else? yo, bring it back. Anything else from five one five two? Justin. Um, the first example from yeah the. This. Yeah. So when we're multiplying fractions, and actually, can I do the second example because it's a bit harder? Yeah. Is it? I thought it was no, pretty easy. Was well, so this one you just have to make it improper, and you have to make this a fraction. So there's more to do, but we're gonna end up applying the same process that we do up here. So when we're working with fractions, we really want fractions with fractions. They're kind of like um, clicky. You know what a click is? Like where friends are really close and they don't let anyone else in. Fractions only want to deal with other fractions. So I want to make this mixed number only a fraction. So to do that, I make it improper. So 1 times 7, 7, add it to the 3. I get 10 sevenths. And then negative 2. How do I make negative 2 into a fraction? Really? Izzy. You're, yeah. Yeah, I put that value, so the negative two, be careful, yeah. over a one. So then the trick with multiplying fractions is straight through, straight through. Has everyone had the stapler? Y'all good? Sweet. Thank you. So when I go straight across the top, first thing to actually think about before you do any work with the numbers, is my answer gonna be positive or negative? So, how do we know, Abby? You know if, well, I'll explain, but you know that it's negative when you have to multiply two negatives and it's positive. Yeah, so a pair of negatives, this is multiplication division rules, different than addition subtraction. A pair of negatives becomes positive. So I multiply straight across the top, I get 20. Multiply straight across the bottom, I get 7. If I want to take this back into mixed number form, I get 2 and 6 sevenths. Um, Colin? I did not get the stapler. Oh. Uh, 
So when I asked, did everyone staple their paper? He just. No, I don't think. Is he? What's up? So we can break this up, and we did in a previous lesson break these up because every negative number is really made by taking the opposite of a positive, right? Are you with me? Like a negative is just the opposite of a positive. So negative 5 is really the opposite. So multiplying by a negative 1 always makes the value opposite. So negative 5, I can really make negative 1 times 5. So up here, there's really a negative 1 hidden out in front of here. Like if I want to write it this way. And this negative 2 over 1, there's really a negative 1 out here, which is what makes it negative. So the opposite of an opposite is just what it is. I would just write a pair of negatives. So when I see pairs of negatives, it's the opposite of an opposite, which is just whatever you start with, which is a positive. So a negative times a negative or a negative divided by a negative, when we pair up, they become positive. Because it like imagine taking, like borrowing $5 negative two times. Like that doesn't really make sense to think about. That's why negatives are so hard to work with. But borrowing money puts you in debt, right? Like I now owe money. But if I do it a negative amount of times, I'm essentially doing it backwards. So I'm like giving money back. So I'm not in debt. Actually, somebody owes me. Because if I'm doing the opposite of borrowing, I'm loaning. So you're losing it? I'm not losing. They owe me. So if using a my balance, like... I didn't actually change money. I gave my money away, but they owe me. They have to pay me. So I have a positive balance of whatever I've loaned. Wait, but it's negative, depends on how you actually look at it. Like, yep, it depends on whose side you're looking at. Because when I loan money, yeah, you gain money, but you're now in debt to me. So like, if I loan you $15 and you spend it, your balance right now is negative 15 because you owe me 15 bucks. And I know you owe me money, so I know there's money that's gonna come into me. So really, that's like positive, because I know there's money that will come into me. It's, it's an odd concept. Negatives are weird to work with. Uh, let's look at 5.3 and see if that can help us understand anything else. We're gonna talk about these problems too. Actually, before we move on to 5.3, has anyone done their 5.1 five, five, and 5.2 homework? Did you get to these, these problems at the end? Yeah. So I, I just made a PDF of the homework because I can make any form of the homework I want. So when we think about these two operations, what two things are going on with the five? Justin? It starts as a negative, but, well, it's going to stay as a negative, but because it's, Three squared or third power. Third power. Squared is when it's one, right? Squared is when it's the two. Oh. So that would be squared. So five to three power, you're gonna multiply it by itself three times. Yeah. Now here's the dangerous part and where your parents and you will end up arguing. I'm telling you now, and you can pull this video up. This is when you and your parents are gonna end up arguing. This is the opposite or the negative of 5 cubed. So really, when we think about the order of operations, my power is right up here in exponents. My negative or my opposite actually is arithmetic. So if you really want to blow your parents away, like to the point that they might fall on the floor and like hand you money just because you impressed them. If your parents try to tell you how to do this, you need to inform them the exponential operation happens before the arithmetic. And that word alone will like 
arithmetic, arithmetic, just means add and subtract. But this is not negative 5. It is the opposite of 5 cubed. If you wanted to do negative 5 cubed, that would need parentheses. So this would take the negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5. This takes 5 times 5 times 5 and then makes it the opposite. So 5 times 5 times 5 gives me 125, and then I make it the opposite, and I get negative 125. But negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5 would also give me the same thing. So this problem should not be that difficult and should not be that much of a um, argument. It's question 18 where the argument happens. Yeah. I think you should. I mean, there's a bunch of other questions like with the absolute values and things, but if you get all the way to the end, there are those questions. Should, at least if you're doing the same thing as me. So this one, yeah? Last one, I swear. Um, hey, you're fine. Okay, so would it still be negative, the answer? Because yeah. with the last problem, it stayed negative in the minus. Now, the, so be careful of relating these two problems. That one used the third power, which is an odd power. So that would have been negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5 if it was in the parentheses. If it wasn't, it was the opposite of 5 times 5 times 5, which still gives me negative 125. So that, either way you would do it, you'd get the same answer. This one, the dangerous part of it is, the negative happens after the power. Come on, give me the highlighter. So when I apply the power, all I do is 10 times 10. Then when I apply the negative, and that equals 100, obviously, when I apply the negative of that value, then I get negative 100 plus 4, which ends up being negative 96. Your parents will try to tell you that negative 10 squared is 100. When they try to tell you that, show them this mom and dad would be 100. But this is different. 10 squared becomes 100, and then the negative happens. Do we have questions on this? Colin. Yeah, I'll, I'll bump it up. Yeah, because now I understand. And you guys start, some of you guys started doing that homework earlier than you should yeah. have. Like, we didn't make it all the way through the lessons. I know, which is not always a good idea, which is why I need to just, like, not make things live until you're really ready for it. I wish I could just make them live and, like, if you want to work ahead, work ahead. But if not, just wait. But I don't know if we're, like, comfortable enough in the year yet. Lily? Sorry, she was, she's been up for a little while. Yeah. Be the wrong thing. Yeah. If you just did 10 times 10 to 100 and just add the negative, that would be the right thing. Uh, and it's perfectly understandable that you don't get this. Like, this is a weird concept. And what makes it worse is your parents were taught math differently. There were different sets of standards. They just were, like, pushed on through the system, just like, okay, learn it, move on. There wasn't a huge emphasis on understanding what we're doing. This statement, and if I was you, I'd probably jot this down somewhere is actually the opposite of 10 squared plus 4. Sorry, and I should just shift all this. as opposed to this is negative <coughs> 10 squared plus 4.
So the difference comes in that here, because my power only applies to the 10, I do the power, then the opposite. Here, the power applies to a negative 10. So therefore, I take negative 10 times negative 10, which gives me a positive 100. And I've already used the negative. So this would become 100 plus 4, which is 104, which is not this problem. This problem, when I do the opposite of 10 squared, well, 10 squared is 100. The opposite of that makes it negative. And then I add my 4. So I get negative 100 plus 4, which equals my negative 96. It's with how it's grouped. The difference is there's no parentheses up here. When there's no parentheses around the negative, it's not a negative number. It's the opposite of that number. And this number is 10 squared. Does that make a little bit more sense? Maybe. The more we work with it, the more it will make sense. All right. Moving on, let's do 5-3. Can I get a note passer outer? Sure, Abby and me. Sure, and AON extensions. So I already put a lot of class time into that assessment. This is like, that's why we build in the AON extensions time. Careful reading the sum of any number and its additive inverse. So y is just representing any number. Talk to me about that later. We got to dive into this. Um, so we don't have a ton of time, but we'll get as far as we can, and then we will finish this tomorrow. So you do not need to do that homework tonight. I will make its due date like next Monday or something. Yay. So five three five four. You can start it. Please pardon the interruption. Grace coming to the office. But please do not feel like you are trying to finish it tonight, okay? Every multiplication statement has two related division statements. And I'm going to give you an example that you can't use. And I want you to write me two examples that are different. One can involve both integers, and the other needs to involve at least one fraction. So I could say that 6 times 2 equals what? 12, right? But likewise, I could say that 12 divided by 2 equals what? 6. Six. And likewise, I could say that 12 divided, I always have to start with my answer if I'm setting up a division. 12 divided, I already did divide it by 2, so now I could do divided by 6. Two. <coughs> Excuse me, equals the 2. So I'll show you one more with a fraction. You can't use that one. I'll do a more difficult one. Um, let's say 8 times, and we're going to start with multiplication, times a half equals 4. So I could likewise start with 4 divided by a half equals 8. Oh, that's true. And 4 divided by 8 equals a half. 
So I guess actually because we're pressed for time, if you'd like to use my examples, you can, or if you'd like to create your own examples, you can, because it will help your brain if you create your own examples. So the, the statement that really gets us here, and the statement that a couple of people were like, no, four divided by a half equals eight. So this is the weird, weird situation. Yeah. Can I explain it? Uh, sure, depending on how you explain it, I might explain it more, but if you give it a shot. All right, so when you divide, you're counting up how many times it is to reach that number you're dividing by. And so since you're dividing by a half, it's going to take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times to get all the way up to four. So what you're saying is how many halves are in four? Yeah. Yeah, which is a great way to look at it. Four divided by a half is saying if I break up four into half chunks, how many are there? Well, there's eight. The other way, and I'm going to use Jack because he's our magician. Let's say Jack uses Maylee as a participant up on one of his stage acts, and he chops Maylee in half. Oh that age-old magician's trick. Chops Maylee in half. Now, we, even though Maylee's chopped in half, we say, Maylee, your upper body gets four cookies. And when we put you back together, you get all of the cookies for your whole body. So half of her body has four cookies. And when we put her back together, how much would she get in total? Eight. eight. eight right? Because if, if half of her body got four, then in total you get eight. So if you give four to half of something, what would be the total is eight. So if I divide four like pens to half of a project, I will need eight pens for the whole project. Or however you want to look at it. I love Justin's way of take four and break it up into that big of chunks. How many of those chunks do we have? So then the question becomes, what about dividing by zero? So let's start with our multiplication statement and then make the related division statements. So what do we want to multiply by zero? Five. five. I love it. You read my mind. I was actually thinking five because I like five. It's a prime number. It's a nice number. Five times zero. Well, that equals zero, right? Actually, I should color code this for this to make sense. Five times zero equals zero. So then let's make that related statement. Zero divided by... Five, sorry, that needs to be blue, equals zero. That needs to be red. And likewise, zero divided by zero equals five. Wait, what? Wait, what? Whoa, mind blown. <laughs> Does this make sense? Oh. Oh. That's the most I've seen you smile this whole year, and I don't even think I've heard you laugh to date. So, this doesn't work! Why? Who knows the rule? Andrew. You can't make something out of nothing. Also, you can't divide by zero. Can I give four cookies to no one? No, like someone's going to possess them even if I leave them in the middle of the room and the custodian comes eat the, and eats them. You can't, you can't divide by zero. Did we already do that in here, the Siri thing? Yeah, if you have no friends and no cookies, that's really sad. So this, hey, whatever you need to put on your paper, this does make sense. This makes no sense at all. So we can't ever divide by zero. You can never, ever divide by zero because the operation doesn't make any sense. Math has to make sense. It is logical. Zero divided by five is zero. If I have zero of something and I divide them to five people, everybody gets zero. And five times zero is zero. But it's this third statement that makes it all fall apart. If I can't make all three statements correct, it doesn't, like, it's not true. So find the quotient of negative 125 divided by negative five. So to make this statement make sense, let's imagine 
that I need to borrow money again. I sorry guys, teachers don't make a lot of money. So I go to Anthony. I say, Anthony, can I have twenty five bucks? He's like, dude. No. 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 Now, luckily, Anthony has some birthday money. I say, Anthony, I will pay you back with interest. And he's like, ooh, lucrative opportunity. So Anthony loans me $25. He knows I'm going to pay him back more than that, hopefully, if he trusts me. The next week comes around. I say, hey, Anthony, you still got that birthday money? Can I borrow another 25 bucks? And I do this five weeks in a row. How much would I borrow in total if I borrowed $25 for five weeks? What's 25 times five? 125, right? So now I would be in a debt of $125. But wait, Anthony would never actually do that, right? Anthony's probably not going to loan me $25 for five weeks in a row. So we need to go back in time to before any of this happened. So if, you got you to just go with me for a minute. If I had a debt of $125 that Anthony had loaned me, five weeks, right? But we go back in time... <laughs> My debt of $125 divided by the five weeks it took for me to work up that debt came from $25 every week. And actually, that doesn't need dollars. But this is where that rule comes back that pairs of negatives become positive. Because if I had a negative value, like if I had a debt, but I go back in time... I can get rid of that debt. So having a debt but then going back in time can get rid of the debt and make things positive. So this came out of positive 25s being exchanged. That's how it happened. Yeah. Like when it doesn't come out nicely, you just might get a decimal answer or some kind of mixed number. Or like, yeah, it just, it just doesn't work as nice. And when the denominator is bigger, like are you talking about what happens with the signs if they're different? It's the sign rules stay the same. So if there's pairs of negatives, they become positive regardless of how messy or nice this is. I mean, this could be like 8,742 divided by 962. And like that probably doesn't work out very nicely. But if it was negative divided by negative, it'd still be positive. And you probably have decimals like forever. Um... So this is just an example of our rule that it doesn't matter where the negative is. So if you want to notate for this rule, negative uh, like one half is the same as negative half is the same as one divided by negative two. So the, like it doesn't matter where your negative falls in the fraction. If there's one negative, one negative, one negative, they're all the same thing. We will pick this up right here tomorrow and get through the rest of these notes for 5-3 and 5-4. You turn those in whenever you get them done. Did you already master? Yep.